Hello again, it's uh, Rob Singler here, and I'm going to try and uh, give you part two of the D420 unboxing and evaluation. I'm no Alec Pierce, but uh, we'll uh, see if we can have some fun getting this down to minimum cracking effort, checking out the valve, and then looking again at uh, case geometry fault to see exactly how well this beauty will breathe. Uh, to reprise a little bit of what we covered in the in the last uh, video, the reason that uh, I'm so excited about the the reintroduction of this regulator is this valve. Uh, this valve is from the D400 series or the D350 series, and uh, is pretty close to unchanged in the new valve in the uh, in the new regulator. The beauty of a center balanced uh, poppet is that the spring that controls uh, the pressure on the poppet is so light compared with a 108 or any standard downstream valve, and even uh, the uh, 620 uh, TI that is uh, the uh, flagship of the Scuba Pro fleet. Uh, and the reason is that the air feed into the center of the poppet uh, balances the force against the poppet face and the force against the lever arm uh, below it. Uh, you can see how this works when you press on the lever. If you look right there, the pivoting action of the lever causes it to rise just fractionally. And that rising is reflected up here in the mouth of the regular where you see the poppet head pop up and the air comes out in this direction. So very light spring forces. And as I said, this has been maintained uh, in the new regulator, and we'll look at that again in a moment. Uh, so one of the benefits of this regulator is that you can get it uh, very light cracking efforts. Oh, why is that important? Obviously because the lighter the cracking effort, the easier it is to, to suck on the reg and trigger an airflow. Uh, the other uh, benefit of the old D400 series, which has not been maintained in the D420, is the coaxial diaphragm and exhaust valve. If the diaphragm in the water, either in this position or looking down or lying on your back, is the sensor of ambient pressure for the second stage, uh, it's measured, for example, in the vertical position at the center of the valve. And that's true pretty much in, in any position. You measure at the, the center point because if the top of the valve is shallower, the bottom is deeper, they average out. So that the center remains your point of measurement in any position. So if you look at the original D400, the distance between that and the top of the exhaust valve was less than half an inch. Now the top of the exhaust valve controls uh, leakage from the case. Uh, in any position, since this is higher in the water column than the center of your diaphragm, air will want to dribble out of there until the pressure inside the regulator equals that distance. So the pressure inside this regulator would drop by four tenths of an inch, say, and put just a tiny bit of pressure on the lever. Well, since the lever was uh, specced out for a one inch cracking effort, that 0.4 inches of, of suck that's put on by ambient water pressure wasn't enough to trigger the valve. The smaller this distance, uh, the lighter the cracking effort you can have until you can no longer seal against the knife edge of the poppet. And that's one reason why the uh, D series had such a sharp knife edge because you could take it down to 0.6 inches without losing the seal against that sharp edge. That's not true of the, of the uh, S series, the 620 that uses a, uh, a, a Delrin orifice, uh, a Delrin knife edge uh, uh, has a, a minimum in the 0.6 to 0.8 range uh, where you could take this one down uh, lower than that before it, before it leaked. So let's do that as our first experiment today. You'll recall when we left off yesterday on this stripped down uh, D420, the case on the back has been removed. The purge lever on the front has been removed. So you can see uh, all the action and it's uh, set up to, to uh, set up to go. A uh, little light cracking effort. Uh, let's measure uh, the cracking effort for this valve. It came out of the box at 1.3 when we left the last video. I think we left it at, a point, at one inch.
You can't hear it on uh, your screen, but the air breakthrough just occurred around the one inch mark. Well, let's see how low we can take this regulator before the spring forces aren't enough to keep the poppet sealed. I'll shut off my airflow. I'll vent the reg and keep a finger on the diaphragm to lift the, the poppet off the knife edge. And let's take off a quarter turn. Putting it back on, I listen. I don't hear a leak. Let's see what we get for cracking effort now. Looks like it's about 0.75 inches, 0.7 inches uh, before it just begins to hiss. Let's uh, see if we can take it even lower. Vent the regulator, shut off the air supply, and we'll take it off, eh, let's say an eighth of a turn. No leak, getting pretty light. You can take this pop to 0.5 inches uh, and it's still sealing. Just amazingly light spring forces. This poppet assembly, a center balance valve, is the best design in the world. But this is the only regulator that uses it. Most use a end balance with a hole down the S-wing poppet. Everybody's seen that white S-wing poppet with a flat face on the end. A little air balancing hole down the back. It puts a little assist on the spring in the back. But even then, the spring is bigger than the spring in this puppy. So... Uh, 0.5. I, I can't believe it. Let's see if we can get even lower. Probably not. That's that's approaching the uh, the limits of physics. But we'll take another. Oh, okay. I've just hit my max on the uh, assembly. They they've obviously figured this out in advance in the design. I've just run up against the stop, and the screw will not unscrew anymore. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'll put it up against the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just hissing. So let's shut off our air supply. We'll put that 16th back. And it looks like 0.5. Yeah, it looks like I've left it at about 0.6 there. Point 0.7. Okay, we're back at 0.7. So. 0.7 is within a tenth of what I could do with the D400. I couldn't uh, get that any any lighter despite that uh, small distance between the top of the uh, exhalation valve and the diaphragm. The poppets wouldn't wouldn't take uh, any lighter pressure. And let's let's look at that. The, the one thing that School Pro has struggled with over the years is the design of these poppets. They all look the same physically, including the original one that came on a self-assemble stem with parts that you would get in the kit. This kit's from 1995. Uh, in fact, this is this is the way the puppet looks now. So it looks as though we've gone full circle and come back from a pre-assembled plastic deal. And actually there was one with a plastic stem for a while. I don't have one of those out right now. Uh, but they would come as single units. In the kits now, they, they come as single units, but it looks as though it's disassemblable, at least from the schematic, uh, just like it was uh, in the 80s and 90s with O-rings uh, that fit up against the cap and a poppet seat that they have struggled. The materials for each of these four seats is different. If you put them under the microscope, you can see how firm or, or soft they are. The softer the seat, the easier it is to, uh, to seal at light efforts, but then at standard intermediate pressures of 140 PSI, air can sneak around the knife edge and leak. So having a softer seat material uh, doesn't help. So the key was having a sharp knife edge, and we'll look at that again in a moment. All right, let's plan to look now at, uh, at uh, case geometry fault again. We talked about that a little bit at the end. I'll shut this regulator off and disassemble it. Uh, the, uh, the case geometry fault issue, again, has to do with the relative pressure that's induced in the regulator when you compare the position of the exhaust valve with the center of the diaphragm. If in the worst position for regulators, unlike the old D400 where it didn't matter that it was upside down, 
you look straight down in most regulators or just a little past straight down, the distance from the center of the diaphragm right there to the top of the exhaust valve, the top lip of the exhaust valve, because that stays highest as you begin to look up, that distance ranges from about one and a quarter inches in this regulator down to zero when you're slightly looking up in the in the water column. And that's not something we often do as divers. We're mostly looking at the stuff on the bottom. So if we call this the neutral position, the distance between the diaphragm center and the exhaust valve top in the back in this position is going to be about four tenths of an inch. So theoretically, in the standard position, this regulator could dive with a poppet set to 0.4, except that we saw we couldn't get it that low without it unsealing, and have just effortless breathing. But let's talk about case geometry fault and what that does. When the exhalation valve is higher in the water column than the, than the sensing area of the diaphragm, that distance here, an inch and a quarter, is going to create a little bit of suck on the diaphragm as air escapes from it. As the pressure inside the case drops by an inch and a quarter, that then causes the exhalation valve to seal up tight against the case and doesn't drop anymore. So when we received this regulator from Scuba Pro, it was set to 1.3, which when you measure the distances from the center of the diaphragm down to the very top portion of the exhalation valve, that turns out to be about an inch and a quarter. So in that theoretical position, looking uh, almost straight down, uh, the exhalation valve will want to vent, the case will want to lose relative pressure compared with ambient at the level of the diaphragm, and if that 1.25 inch drop is enough to trigger the valve, then your reg will free flow and air will just continuously leak out of the exhalation valve. So that's case geometry fault. It's great, it's close to zero in this position, it's worst in this position, and in fact the reverse happens when you're lying on your back, which is why it's so hard to breathe from a regulator uh, like this, and unlike the D400, when you're on your back, whether it's the S620 Ti or this new regulator, uh, it's a little bit harder on your back. Why is that? You've got 1.3 inches of cracking effort, the spring pressure on your, on your lever, Plus, you now have that 1.25 inches of extra seawater that you have to suck against because the diaphragm is higher than the exhalation valve. So it's, uh, it, it gives you your full 1.3 inches of cracking effort when you're lying on your back. That decreases when it hits the zero point and then gets easier as you go to face down as long as you don't exceed the case geometry fault. So... 1.3 inches lying flat on your back, staying, staying, staying. When you hit the zero point where the top of the exhalation valve matches the center of the diaphragm, it's still 1.3 inches. And now as you roll forward, the case will bubble off a little bit, creating a little suck on the diaphragm until you get to the worst position geometrically. And hopefully that's not enough to trigger your valve. So what we're gonna look at uh, in a minute is I'm gonna reassemble this rig off camera, uh, get some water, and we will now put this regulator in the water. Now, you'll remember when we do the sink test, the poor man's magnahelic, if you will, we put the uh, exhaust, uh, I'm sorry, we put the regulator in a bucket of water. Water pressure pushes up on the diaphragm, eventually activates it, activates the valve when you exceed whatever the cracking effort is, and the reg begins to hiss. So a poor man's magnahelic is measuring the difference between this height, right there at the bottom of the case, and when it begins to hiss. As you submerge it in the water, the point at which it begins to hiss, when you make it measure that distance, that's your cracking effort. It doesn't take a $300 magnahelic or even a $60 one on eBay. Uh, you can do it in your sink for free. Uh, that's your poor man's cracking effort. Now, when we measure uh, case geometry fault, we're going to seal this up. I'm going to get a, a glove. And, that I cut the fingertip off of. I'm going to seal this up since I'm not going to dive in the bucket of water with you. And uh, we'll, we'll seal this off just like a diver who has a, a, a lung full of, water, of, of air. Uh, he hasn't closed his glass. We don't hold our breath underwater, but he's, 
at a neutral. He's not inhaling, he's not exhaling. So that's the same as having this end sealed off. We'll do that. We'll submerge this reg with various um, settings on the poppet. I'll adjust it uh, repeatedly and we'll see at what cracking effort uh, this reg actually begins to leak. Uh, the measurements are one thing when you measure physical distances and we think it's one and a quarter inches, hence the 1.3 cracking effort from the, from the factory. But other things uh, come into play, stiction, surface tension, uh, the resistance of this diaphragm to be dislodged by air pressure may give us a little uh, extra tenth or two tenths uh, of an inch. Uh, the diaphragm itself, the ease with which it's, it moves, is good for valve activation, but bad uh, for free flow. So we'll see how this all comes together and see if we can't uh, tune this regulator lighter than the 1.3 inches uh, that we saw uh, from the factory. Uh, for ease of diving because you may be like me. I like a regulator which breathes as effortlessly as as possible. Uh, and uh, that will mean that uh, in any position short of lying on your back, you will have less than the, than the uh, installed cracking effort on, on your regulator. Uh, so I'll be back in a minute. I'm back. Here we go with our uh, wet test of the uh, D420. As before, it's stripped down without the exhaust valve cover or the uh, purge lever so we can see uh, the action. I have covered the mouthpiece now so that it simulates you holding onto a regulator in your mouth uh, when you're diving. And as before, we've tuned it uh, to 0.7 inches on the uh, Magna Helic uh, for a lighter than specification uh, breathing effort. So here we go with a test uh, of case geometry fault, the distance from the regulator to the top of the valve, which we measured at one and a quarter inches, uh, which may be why the reg is delivered to us at 1.3. Uh, although I'm a little surprised because the case geometry fault of the S600 uh, is the same way, and you can bring that down to 1.1. So here we go at 0.7 inches. We submerge the regulator below the surface of the water, and as we do, it starts putting pressure on the valve, I'm sorry, on the diaphragm, and when it exceeds the cracking effort of the lever, the valve will open just briefly. And now we're at about a half an inch, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 inches, and you can see, oh, there the uh, little glove fingertip just popped up. So the valve opened, the regulator pressurized with just a hint that you wouldn't even notice underwater, uh, and now the uh, lung regulator system that comprises the two of you uh, sort of holds that pressure together as we continue to decrease. We go below the water and up oh, the exhalation valve isn't leaking so maybe this will tolerate uh, 0.7. Let's, uh, let's see when we get the entire regulator down below the case. Oh there's a little bubble at the disc. There's a little bubble. Can you see that? So at 0.7 inches cracking effort, the case geometry fault means that there is uh, not enough pressure from the water on the top of that diaphragm lip to hold the pressure inside. It is enough air pressure to leak out of a regulator case. The valve is triggering too light. It's opening too soon. Let's see if we have to adjust this regulator all the way back up though to 1.3 to seal off that little tiny leak. Be right back. All right, I've got this regulator now retuned. I just moved the uh, tuning uh, hex screw about a sixteenth of a turn and we went from 0.7 to 0.8 inches on the water column, I'm sorry, on the cracking effort. So that means it should be uh, that we can submerge this regulator 0.8 inches before the little nipple of the glove pops up showing that the valve open, and we'll see if we can get the entire regulator underneath the surface before that exhalation valve leaks. Boom, it just popped up. And down we go. I don't know if you can see the exhalation valve. I'll 
I'm jiggling it. If I jiggle it, when I jiggle it, what's happening there? It's putting a little brief extra pressure on the diaphragm. Uh, and that's essentially popping the valve, creaking the valve uh, just a little bit. Uh, so let's see what happens if we uh, get, well, we can't eliminate those bubbles. So it's at the, in the worst diving position for this regular, there's still a little leak at 0.8. Now, just so you realize how cracking effort uh, uh, case geometry falls works, when I rotate to the vertical position, where the difference between the center of the uh, regulator and the exhalation valve drops to next to nothing, I wipe off the one bubble away. Let's see if we're getting anything coming out. So now there's not enough case geometry fault to matter until I rotate so that the diaphragm is so much lower than the exhalation valve. And pretty soon we should expect to see another little tiny bubble appear. It's growing just fractionally. Now me, I dive this regulator at 0.8. I think that would be great. I can I can handle that because that's not enough leak uh, to to worry me. I mean, how much air is leaking out of this over the course of a dive? And if I can have a regulator that breathes that light, 0.8 on a dive, uh, that's that's great for me. I can't get a an S620 um, TI down down this low because the case geometry is worse. This is a little tighter valve for that. So this would be okay for me, but certainly the factory would never send out a rig that would leak in this position because as you as you jump around in the water, it will bubble like that. And most divers have too much uh, too much motion; they would pick up a fault and uh, and complain about that. But to me, this this is great at 0.8. Let's just see how much more we have to go up though before it seals off reliably. See if it is that entire 1.25 inches. I'll be back. I'm back with you. I have uh, adjusted another uh, eighth of a turn or so to bring us up to 1.0 inches uh, on the uh, on the cracking effort for this valve. So we should see the uh, glove pop out at one inch below the surface, and then we'll see uh, what happens after that. Boom! The valve opened right there, which looks to be about one inch below that seam. And now let's see if we can get the uh, reg to leak at this point. Looks good. Looks good at one inch of cracking effort. You'd hope that was the case because uh, scuba pro regs have all been specced out at uh, 1.1 to 1.4, and you'd think they would uh, probably not uh, want to introduce a, a reg that would... Uh, that would not perform as well as that. Now, we have a, a, a valve that operates very smoothly with that uh, curved lever, very low friction. We have a center balance poppet that requires only the lightest of springs. We have one inch of cracking effort. And actually, since we jumped from 0.8 to 0.1, I may go back and try 0.9 just to see if I can get 0.9 out of it and a minimal leak at 0.7. So this, to me, is shaping up uh, to be fantastic. What else do we have that's noteworthy? In the standard diving position, you've got the exhalation valve above the diaphragm, which created the case geometry fault. But what else does that do? That also um, assists in exhalation work of breathing because the pressure on the exhalation valve is lighter than the pressure on the diaphragm. It helps, it assists in exhalation. If we compare this diaphragm spoke with the original uh, exhalation valve on the D400, we see that the spaces in between the spokes are about 10 to 15% larger. So we've got a better diaphragm position for exhalation, at least in the normal diving position, a larger exhalation valve, and the same light valve that, uh, that cracks uh, at 0.6 uh, max uh, as we had in the D400. So while the, the case geometry fault for this regulator is not as good as the D400 because of the loss of the coaxial exhalation valve, the one we do have now is larger and in a good position for standard diving uh, so that when you're in this position and you're tuned to say uh, one inch on your cracking effort and the distance from here to here is 1.25 inches and the only thing keeping this together is the is the elasticity in this valve and a little stiction, a little water uh, surface tension there. That means that in the standard diving position, inhalation effort is going to be close to zero. It's going to be close to effortless. 
Uh, so on, uh, on the whole, so far, I am uh, still really excited about this regulator. Uh, it doesn't have the best case geometry that the D400 have, but it's not as bad as the G250. Uh, it's not as bad as the, uh, as the S620. It uh, looks to be better than that. And uh, it's got a center balance poppet, which just gets me really excited. So all told, we're looking like a winner. What's our next step? Our next step is to tear this puppy down and look at the internals inside and look at it from a service technician's uh, point of view because the uh, D400 was a bit of a bear to surface uh, just because of the way the parts were arranged and already we're sealing, seeing that uh, this guy is just easy to take apart. Uh, take off that case with just a little twist and a pull of the pin, uh, pull out the uh, purge lever with a pull of a pin and everything is right out there for you to see. And when you couple that with the uh, C-series uh, lever, uh, with this extremely low friction lever, uh, I think that's an improvement over the S-series as well. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. We're next going to uh, take this apart, and we're going to look at the valve inside of there. You see that black plastic valve right there? We're going to take that apart because that's the plastic, the hard plastic equivalent of the metal uh, knife edge orifice that... Uh, made this regulator work uh, years ago. They've improved the lever, and we'll see if they have uh, maintained the uh, uh, sharp knife edge characteristics uh, of the original um, metal uh, orifice assembly. Uh, that's an improvement over that silly uh, Delrin orifice they put in at the, at the tail end of this, of this production run. Um, interestingly enough, this orifice assembly is one of the standard parts that comes in the service kit. So that even if you have a ham-fisted technician that dings that beautiful knife edge, which happened a lot with the metal ones, uh, you'll get a new one in the next service kit and uh, you'll be good to go. So it makes up for a lot of average training amongst uh, some of the dive shops when it comes to their uh, regulator technicians. Uh, so next time we come back on camera, we'll be tearing this puppy down.